boys and girls. So today I have a special guest with us. We have Jamie. Jamie, you gonna say hi? There we go. So J Jamie's gonna join us in our Wednesday video, which is super exciting. So Jamie, what are you doing to keep yourself busy in this crazy time? School, and I've been doing a lot of reading. Ooh, what what you reading? I've mainly been reading like kind of like crime fiction and like finding get your way to God stories. Yeah. Nice. Look yeah. at you go. Build that brain. Good job. <laughs> Good job. You do you doing all right? You're surviving. Yes. Thankfully, I'm surviving. Yeah. Have you have you killed any of your siblings yet? Surprisingly, not. That that's a good that's a good start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I came close a couple times, but hey, it happens. It happens. You know, uh, it's just me and Dale in the house, and somehow both of us are still alive. So yeah, I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> it's it's an interesting time to say the least. <laughs> All right. So for those who don't know, Jamie helps out a lot at Kids Night. So I thought I'd bring her for the Wednesday video, and she is out in Martinsville Church, so if you go to Martinsville Church, you've probably seen her there, and if you've never met her before, here she is! That's Jamie. Yeah, so, uh, so, Jamie, today we are talking about the story of Jesus healing a leper. Yes. Yes, we are. So, in this particular story, because we see Jesus doing a lot of healing all the time, it's actually extra special. Have you read the story recently? Yes, I read it again last night. Awesome. So in this story, what makes it different? Do you, do you know what leprosy is, Jamie? Um, I do. It's like when, like, well, what happens when you have leprosy is people will refuse to go near you. They won't touch you. It's kind of like how people have to, like, social distance um, for, like, Rona, except for nobody will ever go near you. It's like a life sentence. Exactly. That's pr that's the best way to describe it, and it's a, th a condition that's on your skin. Like you can't hide this. Like you are kicked out, man. Like you are out. But then Jesus does something really weird. And if we go to Luke chapter five, verse twelve to fifteen, you can read it. But we read it this weekend, so we're just gonna keep on going. Jesus goes and sees this man, and the man says, "Jesus, if it is your will, will you heal me?" And Jesus puts a hand on him. Are you supposed to touch people with leprosy, Jamie? No, no, you're not. No, no. Are you supposed to touch people with corona? Nope. 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 But Jesus does it anyway, and he cures he cures this man instantly. Which I think is pretty cool. Like he I agree. He I goes agree. from being a social outcast to being allowed into society just because Jesus touched him. Which, pretty sweet. Yeah. Alright. So, Jamie, how do you think Jesus felt when the man stopped him and asked to be healed? I mean, I think Jesus probably felt more than happy to help. I mean, like, I know, like, me personally, I always strive to be the person, like, that people ask for help. And I know that I got that desire from God because we're all made in his image. So, I think he was probably just, like, more than happy to help and grateful for the opportunity. That's a great, great answer. Like, Jesus wouldn't have been bothered. He wouldn't have been like, oh, seriously. He was happy. He was like, yeah, I'll help you. Just super willing. That's a good answer. Oh, that's a great answer. What did, what did Jesus do to heal the man? Just as we remember. He uh, reached out and touched him, even though you aren't supposed to touch people with leprosy. Which is, that's big in itself. But it's like just a quick touch on the shoulder and boom. All better. Yeah. So, so how do you think the man felt after he was healed? I mean, I assume that the man felt, like, pretty grateful and blessed, which made him, which is what made him want to, like, spread Jesus' word and, like, glory, I guess. Well, yeah, that's, like, this guy, like we said, he's going from being an outcast of society, living on his own, all alone, in. Who knows where in the desert and then Jesus comes and now he's allowed to go back to his family, go back to his regular life. He had to be pretty happy. Yeah. Pretty big deal. How do you feel when you're sick and someone helps you, Jamie? I mean, I'm always like super grateful when people help me. It makes me feel really loved and just happy, I guess. 
it's pretty easy, right? Like when we're sick, it's it's real nice to have help. Cause like, oh yeah, absolutely. There are times you get so sick you can't move. So how are you supposed to eat? Exactly. So it's it's, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. It is. It's like I just want to lay in my bed. So <laughs> yeah, I hear you, Jamie. Who do you know this week that you could show love to and maybe help them out? Um, I could show love to my parents. Mm -hmm. I could help them with, like, chores around the house and stuff. Easy. Could Do people have to be sick for us to help them or care about them? No. no. You really don't. You just help. But, you know, yeah. when it's, <laughs> it's important to know that when G we are sick, Jesus doesn't keep his distance from us. He doesn't social distance. Jesus doesn't believe in social distancing. Because Jesus yeah. can't get sick, so so he's still here with us all the time, and we just he's here for us even when we're sick. It doesn't matter; he's always on our side. What is a miracle? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> a miracle is when something wonderful happens that you didn't think was possible. Because I mean, miracles are normally out like side of like the hands that humans are capable of doing. Exactly. Right? So, can anyone perform a miracle? No. Like, no. God. God performs miracles. Only God. And God uses us to perform miracles, but it's through Him we're given the power. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Last question, Jamie. Are you ready? Yes. If you could ask God for any miracle right now and you knew it would be answered, what would you ask for? Um any miracle and I knew it would be answered. I think that I would ask for like Rona to go away, probably. I think that's because, all of us. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge toll on everybody. <laughs> Everyone, but yeah. And you know, sometimes God heals and sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he performs miracles and sometimes he doesn't. And we never know why he does what he does, but we know it's for his good and his will. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, since we've been talking about helping and, you know, Jesus being here and laying a hand on someone who is sick, we're going to do a little activity. So grab a paper and a pen or a marker or a crayon and you're going to trace your hand on a paper. Me and Jamie already pre-did this. We cheated. <laughs> we did. Yeah, and... Look, look at Jamie's. Yeah, look at her go. We're ready. And what you're going to do on your hand is I want you to write or draw someone that could really use your helping hand this week. So maybe you could draw a picture of your mom. Maybe you can write mom. Maybe you can write dad. Or maybe someone you know is just having a really hard time and maybe they're sick. And just write someone you can help or draw someone you can help in your hand this week and maybe you have a bunch of people that you could put in this hand make a bunch of them and then cut them out and then put them all around your room to remind yourself to make sure you help them out all right so jamie and i just did this activity as well and i put dale because dale is the one i can help the most because i live with him and my family because as much as i can't see my family right now there's still ways we can help people without seeing them. Even if it's just an encouraging word, like texting yeah. or calling your grandma or grandpa or aunt or uncle saying, hey, I love you, I miss you, and I hope you're doing well. What about you, Jamie? Yeah. What do you got? I mean, like, family, I can help them because, I mean, I'm here. And then close friends, I always try and, like, give an encouraging word when people are down or just, like, you know, just, like, help them, like, get through anything, you know? Awesome! So, I encourage you guys to do this activity because it's real simple, real easy, and let us know what you put. You can email me. My email will pop up down here somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> and, yeah. So, we will end in prayer, and we should be good. Hands up. Hands up. Hands in. God, we thank you so much for this time together and that Jamie was able to take some time out of her busy week and be in a video with me and share with the kids all this stuff that she's learning and you know just being a part of a video 
And God, I ask that everyone that we write on our hands this week, that God, you help remind us to be there for them and be a helping hand as much as we can. Even though we have social distancing, it does not mean we can't be helpful. So help us to always be helpful, God, because you are always helpful no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, I'll let Jamie say goodbye first, and then I'll say goodbye. Bye, guys. I miss you all so much. All right. As always, guys, I love you. I miss you, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.